Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks for PyTorch with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use functional programming in Pandas. We've seen functional programming just in Python earlier. Now we'll apply it to Pandas for data transformation. The link to this notebook is contained in the description below. I am going to go ahead and open it in Colab in case we want to run anything. We're going to particularly use apply and map. These allow you to take a function and use it across an entire data frame. Map is the one that we will look at first. We're going to begin by loading this auto miles per gallon data set that we've seen in a number of examples before. You can see it displayed here. What we're going to do now is map this origin number, which is one, two, three, one for North America, two for Europe, three for Asia. We're going to map that to an actual value. So I'm um, string value. So I call it this way here. I'm creating a new field, origin name. By the way, one important thing here, we are creating a new field, so you can't do it this way. You can't directly code it into a field name like that. You've got to actually pass it as a string. And that new one is going to be named origin name, and it's going to have the values from origin, but we're going to map them according to a Python map. One is North America, two is Europe, three is Asia. This results in what you will see here. I also randomize it just so that we see more regions. I believe it was somewhat sorted by region before, which is why I did that. You can also use apply with a data frame. Here we are going to calculate essentially a efficiency number, efficiency ratio. So we're taking the displacement divided by the horsepower. So how big of an engine versus how strong of an engine? If you're a very large but weak engine, that's not so efficient. And you can see that I'm doing this here. I calculate this efficiency based on applying the function that I define right here. I use a lambda so that I don't have to name the function. And I get the values back. If I look at the first 10 rows, you can see that I have calculated them. These are just index numbers. That's not the size of, of the engine. I probably should reset the index so that it looks better, but that does, sh since I did a reshuffle, these are not in order. I can then assign this efficiency back into the data frame so that we now have an efficiency column. This can be useful for feature engineering. That efficiency ratio might, might be useful to the neural network to learn to predict things like miles per gallon. You can also use apply and map for other more complicated feature engineering. So for an example of feature engineering, we're going to take a data table from data.gov, the US government's data repository, and we're going to transform it a bit. The data that we're looking at has a couple of fields that we're gonna use. There's a lot more fields than just these, but we're going to use the state, the zip code, AGI stub is essentially a bracket of different incomes, and they're going to give you a count, essentially a histogram, of how many people are in each of those stubs. So here, we're looking at the zip code data for 63017 Chesterfield, which is where I work at. And you can see that there are six brackets that we put people into and we get the count of how many people are in each bracket by those income ranges. We're gonna to try to combine these into one. So we want to get just an overall average income for that zip code, not broken up into this histogram. So we're gonna combine data. And looking at these bars in the histogram, if you're in stub one, you make below 25,000 US dollars. The next one is 25 to 50,000 and so on. The top one is above 200K. And this is the adjusted gross income. So this is after certain deductions have been made from the income for tax purposes. So obviously there's an incentive there for people to lower their AGI. So it's not true take home pay for these individuals. We then calculate just based on these tables, what is the median of each of these ranges? And what's the, the middle value? So for here, it was 12,500 for this first one. That's halfway through. And 
for the top one, I don't know the true top of this or more. That could be very large if you're in Elon Musk's zip code. <laughs> that, that goes very high. So I'm just kind of topping it out at 212. It's not perfect, but again, for feature engineering, you don't need to be perfect. So here is how I would have counted this for Chesterfield, for 63017. I would get a total because you need a total for a mean. So I am summing all of the counts. This is how many people were in each of these brackets. Then I'm gonna do a weighted sum of the AGI. So I'm going to take each of these median values that I calculated up here and multiply them by each of the prospective counts. So this is the total AGI and then the count of AGIs. And then I just do a basic division. So this gives me a median not a median, kind of an average AGI estimation for 63017 of around 88K. Now we're gonna apply this to the real data set. We're gonna trim, there's several junk zip codes that are zero or 9999. I forget what they're for exactly, but they're not true zip codes. So we're gonna simply trim them. We're gonna do that by basically creating a mask here. And we are, we are simply going to mask out the ones that are those two values. And then we're going to extract just the fields that we actually need, those four fields. And you can see this is what the data set looks like after we've performed these, these basic introductory operations. Now we create a dictionary for the medians, one, two, three, four, five. I manually calculated those and just placed them in there. And then I'm going to to add a field that gives me the, the AGI for each of those stubs. So that way I'm simply putting these values into the table if it's highly repetitive. So if they had a one, it's gonna put 12,500, but I'm gonna do a calculation based on that. So you can see what this looks like. Each of these that had the same stub is going to have the, the, the same median put into there. Now we're gonna group it by zip code. And then we're going to apply the formula. We're going to apply um, N1 times the, the AGI sub, so that way we don't have to look up the median for each of these. We already have that resolved out to that field, and we're going to divide it by the total. And this gives us our mean AGI per, per zip code. Estimation. And we, uh, we, we we format that so that it so that it looks nice. We rename the columns, we get the zip code, we get the AGI estimate for each of those. We can pull up 63017 and we can check it. I always encourage you to do this. Always check, find some way that you can check your data rather than just, oh, this, this, this looks okay. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to follow along with this course, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the bell so that you're notified of every new video and smash the like button if this was useful. Thank you very much.